righty. We got some new walks here. Hold on. There is a double frame at the end. Make sure to clip out the last frame so it loops correctly. And let's see here. And two frames for me. Weird. Let's go back. Another frame. There you go. It's a nicer looseness for sure on the head. I think there's a bit of a wobble in here. You can see how it travels this way and then it suddenly stops and we can get a little bit of a sticky frame-ish through here and it goes straight like the other way down. Like that arc is a bit harsh there with that pause and it moves out kind of whoop right there. A little stop pause. It's not huge, it's not like a, it's a pop, but it's a bit of a, a hold pull down timing wise that's a bit odd. And I know it's a bit stompy in its foot placement, but watch out. There's a bit of a bend too straight, too, too, at least not a pop there. It's just a big, big move through there. And I wonder if that could be just smoothed out a little bit. Just a bit. I, I see this was like a hit for something that seems more like I see the, the flowiness in the arms and this, but at the same time, I see harder hits on this and that doesn't quite gel if that makes sense like this feels more like a harsher boom boom impact but if that's the case then then it would travel a bit through there a bit less and a bit less and just be a bit stiffer in the upper body but i think just softening that little frame there would be good there's some good stuff there i can't really zoom in there i think this should be okay a little offset there I wonder if the uh, white translation seems fine. I think so. I wonder if it's a bit far I'm going in Y, going left and right. It's not crazy though. That was very satisfying when you can see the walk. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If I be picky, there's something that feels broader not then in here but it seems like there's a bit of a break and this rotates a lot it gives me a bit of a dislocated feel in terms of chest and hips this is a broader move with his arms i can see that rotation being bigger but it's not huge in terms of what the legs and the hips are doing so i feel like that could be toned down just a tad it's good stuff though Yeah. Silently, somewhat watching a cycle. I don't think that's a lighting issue. I'm seeing a pod. It's a lighting thing through there. It's definitely shoulder heavy in terms of leading with the shoulder. But that's more of a performance thing. I think to me, it would be the wobble in here and the impacts on the knees. And then we got this guy going to this still feels really really fast and it's this you can see how as this arm travels we have that sudden impact there and then also it feels like we're we're here ish right if you look at the neck and the top of the head area then we pop down and then we kind of rest. You can see how the spacing goes, boom, and then kind of locks. And then it continues to, to go down with a sudden move to the left. That's just, feels a bit fast. I think if you had, if you had something where he's like this, and then you have a, like a impact, you know, like something where we see something going on with my, Scribbles. <laughs> right? And then, well, I just deleted the whole thing, but actually, why not? Since I can save this. What if it gets hit here? Bam. 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 <laughs> Bam. And then 
and something like that. And then it goes. And then as it falls, see, to me it falls, this would be another hit. That. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hit. My tool sometimes goes into streaks instead of dots, but anyway, if I take onion skinning away, and it's more like, ooh, poof. see the speed of the shoulder, boom, makes sense if he gets hit by a projectile. That's that's my very long-winded point here. <laughs> it doesn't work for me in terms of physics of someone falling because the timing feels like someone's either pushing or pulling the character, and it's not a physics-driven ragdoll drop. So I think that could be so it could also be cool to add something like that in there. I think for the rest, once we're getting into the polishy aspect, I think there's some good stuff. I look at arcs of the sore tips. That seems pretty cool. I'd be careful with with the overlocking of the leg. Because then once you're there, A, it feels like really exaggerating overlocking but then after that like once you reach reach around here if you look at this section it's like super locked if you are overstretching and falling that foot would already rotate over and banking sideways and that feels too ik locked but again if you don't do that impact it might still be okay to simplify some of the actions through this the head and the chest area. It feels like it feels almost a bit too complicated. But there's some good offset in arms. Watch out. This hand feels a bit it's you know sticking to this orientation. And then suddenly it shoots over into this. And then we're kind of staying in that visual. Turn this off here. You know, you can see how we're locked, and then suddenly it's like either that wrist has its own little thing or it's somewhat tied to the root or something else, and then it's kind of locked. And you can see here, even spacing wise, it goes left, 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 boom, hits that wall, boom, right there, even though it should be swinging. So now that you've engaged unconsciousness and ragdolliness, this can start to drop, the, you know, the wrist. I mean, he wouldn't really hold on to this. Anyway, if you think about it, he would start letting go of this. So that's if you're super picky, you're thinking about if he is fainting here, that hand would open and the swords would drop. And especially during something like this, whew, technically he wouldn't hold on to that. Unless, you know, he's got some straps that go over his forearm, wrist and into the sword. And he is, it's like Daniel Radcliffe style. It wasn't like a uh, gun akimbo or something where his the guns are attached to his hands. <laughs> Maybe it's something like that. Um, side view, it's also interesting where if we're saying, oh, he got hit, then that step that this foot makes here feels really deliberate, where it's kind of like, huh, this is more like attention, cha cha cha, versus, oh, I'm hit, I'm off balance. Let me take a broader step back to regain balance and then have the root be more wobbly. That makes sense. If you track the root, it just goes back. It's more like he's trying to dodge a shot. Which he could. Again, he could be where, um, you know, you have a projectile here. And then here. Here. And then exits. And then through that, especially if you look at the spacing of the head. Head goes down. Boom, and it shoots up. This now feels like, oh, well, is this the impact? <laughs> and then he goes. There you go. Something small, right? Let's turn this off. So if you look at the spacing, he could evade and then go boom. That's also a possibility. That's what I'm kind of seeing. So right, if you track the head, 
Let's change colors here. Take that nose as it goes down, 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 down to here. Boom, look at that. That's your linear key direction change. So you can see how if you track this, that's a horrible line. He just goes, follows that line. It's a very linear key. So just some generally spacing -y issues there that kind of lead to the confusion. I mean, so if, is that an impact? And also if so, watch out, this was really broken through there, how that gets pulled back. It's almost a bit like there's like a middle spine con that is being pulled too far. So watch out for that. A, that it's not, you know, too bad. I mean, if you could pull, if this is an actual impact and it goes, uh, you know what I mean? And it pulls the body back. Then, yeah, I, I could buy that this is so stretched. But then you're going to have to smooth out that where it gets softer. And then again with that up so it doesn't suddenly stop. So it doesn't look like a dodge step, dodging step. Anyway, hope that makes sense. Then, wait, double frames. You got to delete those frames. One, two. All right. Feels a bit harsh spacing wise on the head here. I know it's very fast, but it's if you step through, you can see the head goes down, down. Whoa, doesn't go to the left. Feels almost stuck in frame. And then we go up, up, up. Whoa, and that's your loop. Even if I add, did I take one frame too many? It could be. I did not. Okay, that's my double frame I'm deleting here. If you're wondering, I'm deleting that one frame so now we have that big pop over this also your leg ik is stuck here so watch out there's just some technical issues there because you'll see this also in the hands how it goes up up whoa and then changes direction and this feels you can see this here that's your arc or lack of and then you have also the wrist that pops suddenly over there so it feels like from this angle, the arm coming up has at least some hang time, but it still locks height-wise. It goes up and up and then, whoa, actually goes down. And then, whoa, that's your actually frame one to two pop down. Which, you know, at speed, it has a nice chuk, 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 quick feel, but I still, especially through here, feel the pops and I, I see them in the arms. But with that speed and all that, it's less brutal than this section through there. So watch out for some cleanup during the loop. Let's see. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Nope, that's slower. Then we got two frames again. So I'm doing this and I'm taking this and bringing that back so that the loop is correct. So just make sure that you do that on your end. I still feel the hit and the pause there. But now we have side view. I think for a run, you can minimize the left and right a bit more. The faster you go, the less left right you have and the less spread out the legs are gonna be. So the faster, the more inwards for, you need less balance because of speed, but then also the up and down and left right will be minimized as well. So to me, it's a bit much left and right. It's not like a shot killer, but I would still minimize like 20%. What is this? This is 25% faster. Probably like the other one, huh? But it's mostly, again, the spacing issue. Because the backwards arcs on the legs are cool. Definitely works there. Just watch out. You got this moment of the locked thigh here. Leg pops down and then locks, locks, and then goes back. So watch out for little technical puppies like that. And I don't know if you have anything in your, you know, when your your body goes up, up, and then pops suddenly down. So again, watch out a little bit of those arcs. But let's pretend you would keep that. Then on something like this, I would then drag the swords a bit, drag a bit, and then boom, through here they will come down. Some clanking in the props would be cool too. That seems pretty okay. I don't think maybe it's touching, but I don't see the sections right there. 
I guess he would constantly hit the blade here, huh? Cut his fingers a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but you can feel the pop too, especially looking at this here. Right there. Pop down. And then here. Pop down. And then lock. So then I would loosen up and just animate those swords a bit separately so there's a, a looser feel. Especially since it's more the overlappy aspects uh, and not super attached. You know, it's not one piece of geometry, the body and the props. So I think that could be something. Sorry, I got something playing in the background. Playing as in a neighbor's uh, uh, gardeners. I should have a noise compensating microphone filter on. So we'll see if that actually works, huh? I still feel a hiccup stop here. Oh, right there. Yeah. And then at the end as well, like the end has a, an odd massive momentum forward and then really stopping and then it just kind of locks, especially through here where only arms are moving and not the body. That seems a bit odd. Yeah, the biggest one first is your starting is really nice here. I love that line. That's all cool. That's cool. Then we go into here and then, whoa, that root locks. Locks here. Whoa, it still locks. And then we continue forward. But even then, we have a rotation where the pivot is there, but the translate doesn't move forward. And then it continues. Careful, careful. And then we got that landing again where if you look at this, it would be smoother. But that forward translate is a bit too sudden because we are landing. Watch out with that leg. Boom, pop there. But, you know, you look at... It's not a dramatic direction if you look at all this swinging. It comes from down here. Hold on, let me go back. And then, whoa, where is this coming from? Where is this forward drive coming from? So that's a bit odd. And then you got that body that choo -choo goes forward quickly and then kind of stops. I do like that this arm continues. At least something here continues its forward momentum. But it, but it still feels mechanically a bit off with this all stopping and not having a bit more forward translate. A bit of a bend and then coming back. So I think, again, I like the actions. It just has a lot of hiccupy, hiccupy moves. Just like the sword here going back in my fantastically horrible line. Let me find an arrow. <laughs> when it's getting there, you go. Right, so it's here through here that's pretty much following a straight line so on something like this get a little arc shoo, could be something like that and then here we're a bit let's watch out on stuff like this where i would cheat that sword up a bit and flatter otherwise we just have a little toothpick here even this i would rotate the sword so we see a bit more of the broader side so it doesn't get lost the tricky here colors are going to help as well again it's very toothpicky and then we're losing all of that. So even here, I would rotate that blade up a bit. Cheat that a little bit so we understand a bit more. Like here, we're starting to lose a lot. Even here, watch out. So a couple of frames. I mean, it's cool to see a shishing, a switch from But it's sometimes at the cost of readability. Here's another one where it suddenly stops, I feel like, mechanically. He swings forward and stops, which is okay, because this leg is still forward enough to stop that. But that's that's the stopping frame. But then nothing overshoots. So the head and chest will go forward a little bit, then go back. The root has a bit of a straight linear feel going down here. This is a bit magical in terms of how far it travels. That root is a bit straight in its path. You'll see basically just goes up into the leg pop there. Poof. And then it's more like pendulum. You know, if you look at if that is. I mean, it's a super big key, but how does this circle tool work? Hold on. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm doing this here ish. Kinda. Let's go a bit broader. Almost. This is painful to watch. Right, if that's the the arc of the root, you can see how far forward we go versus, well, that's the pivot that root would land 
I wouldn't say exactly here because you can have a little bit of forward drive. This just feels a bit far. I would probably land around here. Just a, it's a magical moving forward that isn't quite supported by a push off because that foot is now, I you know it's sliding, maybe indicating that it is a push, but now it's off the ground, not quite buying that last part. If that makes sense. That's an interesting switch rule that's really hip heavy and independent from the chest. Feels a little bit broken there. It's a cool move though, in terms of moving around, dragging the knee or, 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 um, leading with the knee, but watch out, then you got some irregularities in your head, spacing, it goes up, up, bam, locks in space, and then boom, pops to the right, and then whoa, pops up, and then whoa, someone smacks him in the face right there, boom, and then suddenly it travels from here to here, look at the spacing difference, boom, comes out of nowhere, so I think this needs a heavy, heavy pass of cleanup, I would say. This guy, whoa, what was that? Okay, hold on, tell me, no, you have other cameras. So let me see, does it look like the camera's moving? Okay, that's interesting to see. Looking at this view, what is going on here? Okay, that is the camera. <laughs> on something like this presentationally, I will put in a grid. That's my fantastically horrible Oh, perspective lines, whatever they are. Yes, I failed class um, to show what's going on here. Presentationally, I'm not sure that's the best. You would have to maybe start them here and give us some actual realistic translate. Like that's a wonky thing to suddenly look at. Imagine this is on your reel and you go, okay, that's cool. Whoa, whoa, what was this? Because we don't have time to repeat and look at this. That's your main presentation. So watch out for that. Looking top left, it makes more sense. But you can still feel that. It's like a linear key right there. You can see the root, the chest, the, the line, the sword. Chung, linear keys around that. So yeah, it's a good view to have. Definitely clean, clean, clean. And I'm fine with, you know, form of stylization. I can still, like I said, buy that he kind of moves forward. It still feels magical. That won't go as far. Even like this is magical, but I love it. Boom. But it still needs a heavy, heavy hand of cleanup. Like even here, if you take this, right? And it goes this way. Whoa, it suddenly stops. And it's straight. This would be during this section. Keep you leaning over this way. And then come back. That feels wonky here. You can see the breakup in the, in the neck and everything. Same thing here. If that route is going so quickly to the left, here suddenly goes to the right and travels, continues to the right. That needs a bit more. It's basically side to side movement. I should do an FNA about this again. The side to side movement, I would approach just like a bouncing ball where it goes up, hang time, and down. It takes a while to go up and change direction. Now you can take this. Can I? Hold on. I rotated the whole thing. <laughs> Ah, oh, but my, my drawing did not rotate. It did not do anything. I want to illustrate that. Your bouncing ball, when it goes drawing, right? It would be higher. That's your moment of slowdown where the spacing gets slower, there's hang time, and so on. This is the same thing if you turn it upside down, 90 degrees, right? And you got your bouncing ball, same idea. If someone steps sideways, go to the side, oh, it takes a while to come back because you need uh, the leg to go at least a little bit pointed this way to change direction, to push for the muscles and blah, blah, blah. So every time you have this character go this way, it can't just shoo, suddenly go the other way. So there's a lot of, you know, momentum issues. Like if you go, this feels like it's going this way a bit. And then here we're super locked here versus why isn't it continuing that arc? So, it's really great that you have all of those angles, but you really have to use them to your advantage and track those things. So what I would do is constrain a sphere here and hide the rest and just look at how the sphere works and then treat that as a bouncing ball in terms of the spacing and rotations and not rotations, but the translates and going left and right. And does that work like a, like a more stylized bouncing ball? And once you have that, 
that's going to help you with your root. And then once that is settled, you can go into a chest and then the head and the rest and look at the proper, you know, the arcs and the spacing because changing the root is going to mess up the rest. So I would check that first. All righty. Hope that makes sense. Thanks. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.